You are welcome, thank, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. Lose him and let him go. Tonight is your night in Jesus' name. Father, we come before you. The ancient of days, the eternal one, the one that created the whole universe, and with you, nothing shall be impossible. And I pray that tonight, there will be the miracle of him and let him go. Here at the Alpha location, everywhere we are connected together in the homes, in the churches, in the communities, every nation, every country. Lord, in your power tonight, loose them and let them go. Confirm it, O Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down and you should be expecting the confirmation from heaven. Tonight is your night in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 16 and I'm reading from verse 15. It says unto them, But whom say ye that I am? In verse 16, it says, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou by Jonah. Now understand. Anyone, when you answer that question, Who do you say that I am? If you can reply, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The same blessing he came, he brought upon Peter, he'll bring upon you. He said, Thou art, blessed art thou, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Once you accept the revelation of the Father from heaven, and you can say from the depth of your heart, He is the Christ. He is the liberator. He is the redeemer. The blessing from heaven will come upon you immediately. Look at verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. It was seen upon that statement you made that I am the Christ, the Messiah, the mediator, the advocate. And you say I am the son of the living God upon that point, upon that utterance, upon that confession I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I was waiting for you. Amen. Amen. Now look at verse 19. Verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever, whatsoever thou shalt bind on the earth, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever, whensoever, wheresoever, anywhere, anytime, anyone, anybody, whatsoever thou shalt bind on the earth. And what, when, wheresoever thou shalt bind anything on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. At my location, amen. amen. Matthew chapter 18, we're looking at verse 18. Verily, very, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Tonight, I want to briefly talk to you 
on liberation commanded you command that liberation you say be loosed because christ said because christ assured us and he said verily he says truly he says certainly i say unto you whatever you heard that christ said unto you that's exactly what you do. And when you do what he said you should do, is there in heaven, is watching us tonight. Is looking at us tonight. And he's looking at how we carry out his command. The liberation commanded and confirmed in heaven. Liberation commanded. I command it from here, from the pulpit here on earth, and upon you there, it's confirmed from heaven. Because verily, and truly, and certainly, and undoubtedly, without a shadow of doubt, whatsoever ye shall bind on the earth, shall be bound in heaven. When that sickness is bound, ready to go, is bound in heaven. And when you are loose, when you are liberated, when you are released from that oppression and from that sickness and from that evil, tonight, where are you? It sets you free. Free in your soul, free in your body, free in your mind, Every shackle, every chain, every sin that binds you tonight as we release you from here. You are released from heaven. You have come out of that wheelchair. You have come out of that bondage. Because whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Liberation commanded and confirmed in heaven. Three things we're looking at. Look at number one. Number one, the cross for our liberation from evil. The cross. The cross at Calvary. The cross of Christ. The cross on which he died. On that cross he died. And at the end, before he breathes his last, he said, it is finished. Your problems are finished. Your yoke is broken. Your life is set free tonight in Jesus' name. Why? Because of the cross which has been there for your liberation from evil. Number two is the condition of your liberation from everything. 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 Any whatever it is, and whatever the name, and however long it has been there, there is liberation from everything tonight. And I'll give you the simple condition for you to just step out and you receive that liberation in Jesus' name. Number three is the confirmation of total liberation from heaven. It said, We proclaim it here on earth. Is performed from heaven. It said, We declare here on earth, and it is decreed in heaven. It says, We lose you here on earth, and as a confirmation of that being loose in heaven, even tonight upon your life in Jesus' name. Let's come to number one. Number one is the cross for our liberation from heaven evil now evil is next to the devil evil wants to put a d before that e that the devil everything that comes from the devil from demons from satan from the enemy of your soul everything is evil so when we say the cross for your liberation from evil Everything that came from the devil and knocked at your door and entered your body and entered your life. Praise the Lord tonight, you're free. Look at John chapter 19 
I'm reading from verse 4. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Pilate said, I've examined him. I've questioned him. I've, kind, I've, I've sought for fault. And I find no fault in him. My question to you, my question to the world is, why then was he crucified on the cross? No fault in him, so much fault in you. And because of your fault, he had no fault, he had no sin, he had no blemish because of your sin. Because of your blemish. That's why he was crucified. He carried that for you. He had no load of sin to carry. But you had such a big load of sin. And he said, I have no fault. It's proclaimed there. Pilate said it. Even the Jews knew. The whole world knew. And yet, I'm going to carry your load. He will carry your sin tonight. I'm going to carry your load. He had no sickness. It's you that had the sickness. He had no sin. He had no sickness. And he's going to carry your sickness away tonight. He did not have any damnation, any condemnation. Why then was he crucified to carry your damnation and to carry your condemnation is taking that load of you tonight in Jesus name look at verse 30 there in verse 30 it tells us when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished can you say that with me it is Finished. Final. I said finalized. Free. And full. And it's flowing to you tonight. It is finished. Your sins, it finished on the cross. Your sickness, it finished on the cross. Your suffering, it finished on the cross. Your shame, he finished on the cross. Every, your shackles and those chains is finished on the cross. If it is finished, now you are free. I am free. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 2. And we're looking at verse 16. It says, And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. A very simple verse, not very long. It's saying, there was enmity between man and God. Why? Enmity between sin and holiness. He is holy, holy, holy. Completely holy. Inward, outward. Every time, from all eternity until now, until eternity. Holy. But man was sinful. Disobedient. Rebellious, and because oil and water do not mix, holiness and sin will not mix. We add enmity. He is love. We were the problem. We turned our backs against him. And because of that enmity, we couldn't, uh, you know, the God you hate, the God you don't love, the God you don't interact with, what can you have? We have sin, we have sickness, we have suffering, we have problem, we have shame, we have condemnation, but Christ has come. He died on the cross of Calvary and he slew the enmity between us and God. He takes away all the enmity and then all he says now is, 
you've been turning your back on the holy God of heaven. He says, turn around, repent, and look at God. Because today, all the enmity is taken away. All you need to do is turn around and you'll see the face of God, the favor of God, the power of God, the salvation of God, the healing of God in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17. Verse 17. And he came and preached peace unto you which were afar off and to them that were near, the Gentiles are far off, the Jews near. He came to bring peace to everyone. There's no Jew that will have peace without Christ, the Prince of Peace. And there's no Gentile that can have peace without Christ, the Prince of Peace. And then in verse 18, verse 18 says, And through him we both have access. Through him we both have access access. What does that mean? It's saying that the Jew and the Gentile, both of us, will now have access. The same road. The same road leads to peace of God. The same road leads to forgiveness. And the same road leads to healing. And the same road leads to the blessing of God. The Jew can get it. You will get it too. Those who went before, between us and Peter, the same road. Whatever Peter got, you get tonight. The same road, whatever John had, you have tonight. Because the same source of freedom is what we have. And because we go by the same expressway. There's no hold up in the express way that goes from Christ to the Almighty God. And there is no traffic jam. There is no delay. That's why you find every way you read in the Gospels about Christ, it says immediately he was set free. Immediately he was free. Instantaneously, it says straightway he was killed. Because there is no traffic jam, because there is no go slow, and because there is no hold up. As we mention the name of Jesus tonight, you are set free and you are loose in Jesus' name. For through him, through him. And he never rejects anyone, anyone who comes, anyone who calls on his name. Salvation comes, healing comes. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Unto the Father at the cross that does that. Look at First Peter chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 20, uh, 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the cross, on the tree. It says tree because the cross was made of wood. And the wood came from a tree. That's why it says on the tree. Still the same thing. Who is own self bear our sins in his own body. He says he took the sin away from you, from me, from you, from her, from him and now he placed it on his own body to carry it away forever and ever. And when he takes your sin, he puts them in the depths of the sea. And they will never come back to accuse you or torment your life anymore in Jesus' name. Then it says that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. Now the power to live in righteousness he gives unto us. Why? How? He took our sin and he gave us his righteousness. He took our penalty and he gave us his justification. He took our pollutions away and he gave us total purity. Our heart, our mind, 
our soul. He gives us what he had when he took away what we had. So, what we had before, we don't have again. What he has is what we now have. We had the practice of sin. We couldn't do without sinning. He has taken that away. Say amen. amen. We had the pollution, the dirt, the defilement of sin. We had it in the past. He came, he took that away. You are not dirty anymore in Jesus' name. He came and he took the penalty, the punishment. He took that away. And because what we had before, when we come to Christ, we don't have anymore. He took that away and he's giving us a clean conscience and a clean heart and peace of mind. Then he's taking the eternal punishment away. Eternal punishment, the suffering in the lake of fire is taking that away and it brings us now to heaven with him. Heaven. Somebody shout heaven. Hell is gone. Finished. Closed up. And now we have the joy that what we had before, we don't have today and now all we have is the salvation of the Lord and the freedom of the Lord. The Lord confirm it in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And now he says, by whose stripes he was healed. By whose stripes? Tell me. The stripes, the stripes. When sickness comes, it strikes, strikes us smites us. It's like putting stripe on us. I feel the stripe in the back. I feel the stripe in the tummy. I feel the stripe in the eyeball. I feel the stripe. Everywhere you feel sickness and you feel the pain and you feel the torment, that is where the stripe is striking. And then Jesus said, I'll take the strife. I'll take the suffering. And then I give you my own health. Wouldn't you like to be as well as Jesus was well? He had no cancer. You'll have no cancer. He had no ulcer. You'll have no ulcer. He had no brain damage. You will not have any brain damage. He had no, in, no insanity. You will not have insanity. Because he came to take away what was smiting you. And what was striking you. And what was tormenting you. He took away what you had. That he may give you what he has. And all that he has is health. All that he has is perfect soundness. He took away what you used to have, and now tonight, lose him and let him go. I welcome you to the health of Christ. I'm going to say something that maybe you will say. Do I understand that? Very simple words. You'll be as healthy as the one that healed you. As healthy as the healer. Because it takes away the sickness and the suffering. And then he gives you. What he gives you is not, you know, man's health. What he gives you is not the people's health. What he gives you is his own health. He gives you his righteousness. He gives you his health. And then he makes you as healthy as the one that healed you. As free as the one that sets you free. As mighty, as powerful as the one that has come to give you the strength and the power and the might. Tonight, you're loosed here. It's confirmed in heaven. Loose from sin. Loose from sickness. And loose from suffering. I am free. I am free. 
Look at number two here. Number two is the condition of your libration from everything. Your, the condition of your libration from everything. Now, human helpers, they help us with one item of request at a time. And that's why we have specialists there, specialists there, specialists there. And when you take your problems to them and you say, I have this challenge, I have this challenge, how many? Seven. Okay, I specialize in taking one. And so I'll finish with you and I'll take away the challenge, the one I know how to deal with, and then I'll send you to the next expert. You get to the next expert, and he says, what do you have? I used to have seven, now I have six, because that expert helped me. Okay, what are the six? You tell him, well, by the way, I specialize, I can take this away, and you have to go around like that, and then you come to some of them, and you say that, well, nobody specializes in this one. This one kills people. And then you come to Christ, he says, everything, you're liberated. From the power of darkness, you're liberated. From the power of disease, you are liberated. And from the power of the demons, you are liberated in Jesus' name. He does not specialize in just one item and one disease and one problem. And then today, he takes one away. And then another day, tonight, everything will get out of your life. Because he says, Loose him and let him go. And we're looking at this. We're looking at. Uh, we're looking at the condition. The condition of being loosed from uh, everything. Matthew chapter nine, uh, verse thirteen. In Matthew chapter nine, uh, looking at verse thirteen. Uh, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. You know, the Lord says, you come to me, all right, go and learn. Learn from your preacher. Learn from your pastor. Go and hear what he has to say about me. And what I do, you learn. And when you learn, then you see, Jesus, the preacher told me that you are the one that will confirm the loosing, the liberation from heaven on the basis of your mercy. That already you've done all the sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice. And now I come because I learned. Look at that. But go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. So if you come, that's why. Have you noticed in the crusade, we don't take offering. Why? So that you understand there's no other pay. There's no other price. There's no other sacrifice. There's no other giving by his tribes. Not by your money. By his tribes. Not by your sacrifice, by his stripes, not by your endeavor. Because he says, now, everything is finished. Everything is credited to your account. The healing credited to your account. The salvation credited to your account. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, that's what the righteous there means, the religious, the Pharisee, those who are still saying, how much do I pay? He says, I don't come for those religious people, those who think everything they will buy. You can buy things on earth, but you cannot buy commodities from heaven. 
there's no money no amount you can pay salvation comes from heaven you cannot pay for that healing comes from heaven you cannot pay for that deliverance comes from heaven you cannot pay for that grace comes from heaven you cannot pay for that because what you are expecting and what you are waiting for is coming from heaven that's why he says, I don't come for those uh, people that want to say I fast twice in the week, I'm righteous, and I give tithes of what I have, I'm righteous, and I'm not like this publican. He said, I didn't come for those people, but he came to call sinners to repentance. That's all, sinners to repentance. What's repentance? You are, turning, you are facing this way, the way of sinfulness. And now you know that God is not in that direction. Because it's the holy God. What's repentance? Turn around and put your back against your sin and say, I refuse all those sins. I forsake all those sins. And I jettison. I take them away from my life. And when that is done, you turn around and you face the Lord. And because you are facing the Lord, it says you are now turning the right direction. You turn away from the love of sin. You turn away from the life of sinfulness. You turn away from everything that is evil. And you say, Lord, I turn to you wholeheartedly today and tomorrow and for the rest of my life. I turn unto the Lord and I am in agreement with God now. In my talk, in agreement with God, in my life, in agreement with God, in my behavior, in agreement with God, in my proposals, in agreement with God, in my plans, in agreement for, with God. And in everything I do, everywhere I go, everything I put my hand on, I've turned away from the path of sin have turned to the Lord and I reject anything that will get me back to the old life. That's what the Lord is saying. And he said, I came to call everyone to repentance. I'm looking at Acts chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore Repent ye therefore. You remember this acts in John chapter 19. It said it is finished. And because I have finished everything. I paid the price. All that remains for you to do. The only condition that you are looking at now. Is repent ye therefore. And be converted. Repent ye therefore. Turn around and turn away from sin. And turn away from the love of sin. And turn away from the lifestyle of sinning. And turn away from lawlessness in sin. And turn to the love of God. And turn to the Lord, the God of heaven. Repent ye therefore. And be converted. You understand converted? It means there is a change. A change in your outlook. A change in your mind. A change in your heart that you change to become like Christ. Christ Christian. Christ Christian. The change of mind, the conversion is to turn you to be like Christ. Loving words, that's what he spoke. Good words, that's what he spoke. Righteous life, that's how he lived. And now, a Christian, because you are converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing, you know, the times of refreshing, uh, that, that's different from the life of dryness and the, li the life of weariness, the life of always tired, tired, tired. The life of weariness before you came to Christ, that was it. I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm devastated. I'm frustrated. I'm confused. I am clamped down. 
I am under pressure. I am oppressed. But now it says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. It has come tonight. I said, it has come tonight. And then in verse 20, in verse 20 it says, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Verse 21, in verse 21, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration, refreshing, regeneration, restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Since the world began, everything God has spoken by the mouth of the prophets since the world began. He said, all the promises you've heard from the time of Genesis until the time of Exodus, until Malachi, all the promises that God has given on salvation, on forgiveness, on healing, on deliverance, on restoration, all the promises that have been given now that Christ has come, all those things spoken by the prophets before, since the world began, everything is yours now. Everything is mine now. Everything is mine now. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away. That's the blessing. In turning away. That's the blessing. In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Lord, what does that mean? Just turning away from his iniquity. He said, yes, because, you understand, without sin, there'll be no sickness. Sin invited, attracted sickness into our lives. Without iniquity, there'll be no infirmity. Iniquity invited and brought infirmity into our lives. Without disobedience, there'll be no disease. Disobedience invited disease into our lives. And it says, he has sent Jesus. And that Jesus turns us away from sin. And all the consequences of sin. From sin and from sickness. All that Christ has done is to turn us away from iniquity. And infirmity is a consequence of iniquity. When it turns you away from iniquity. Consequently, you are turned away from infirmity. He came to save us from all our disobedience. And once he takes away the disobedience, the disease also will fall out of your life in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good amen. Acts chapter 17, we're looking at verse 30. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. Times of ignorance. Times of ignorance. What does that mean? Times of ignorance. The smoker is ignorant. That smoking will bring long cancer. Now he has the smoke, he has the cancer. And the Lord said he was ignorant. But I'm going to save him and then I will kill him. If he fulfills the condition, times of ignorance, ah, alcohol brings high blood pressure. And the high blood pressure will eventually be connected with the heart and you have cardiac, you know, cardiac arrest. And 
He was ignorant. We didn't understand anger, hatred, violence, and fighting. All that will result in a life that will depreciate in value. And you die before your time. We were ignorant. We were ignorant that adultery and fornication will bring HIV and will bring uh, will bring venereal disease and the lord said you were ignorant what did you know you knew nothing about your action the crime whether you do the crime online or you do the crime on the side of the road it will bring imprisonment you didn't know that you thought you know i can do that and go free all these times of ignorance now we come and we say, Lord, how ignorant I was. What did I know? I knew mathematics. Did I know that smoking will cause cancer? What did I know? I knew that three plus four will make, you know, whatever it is. Did I know that alcohol will bring this and weaken the heart? What did I know? We were ignorant, but now Christ has come. And he calls us unto himself so that all that times of ignorance, he will forgive you tonight. And then, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Why? Look at verse 31. In verse 31, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. He said we should repent because God has appointed a day in the which he will judge. Let me explain to you. Repent, that's between you, one person, and God now. And you come tonight, you raise up your hand. You say, Lord, I turn, I repent, I get away from all my sin, and I receive your mercy, I receive your forgiveness, I receive your salvation. It says, then I cancel all your sins. Amen? Amen. I blot out all your transgression. Amen? Amen? And I give you peace of mind. And I give you joy, the joy of salvation. But somebody says, hmm, I don't, uh, somebody there may be saying, I don't want to repent now. I don't want to turn now. He says, but remember that God will judge the world. What does that mean? You'll be among the people worldwide and there will be thousands and thousands and thousands of years it's all eternity and then you'll be called out the sin you're trying to hide now everything the Lord will open the book in the midst in the, in the front of everybody that has ever lived all your friends or your neighbors all the people that know you, even the people that did not know you, and your sins will be read out, judged before the whole world. And what you should have settled between you and him as an individual, then the sin is brought out in the great assize. And then the final sin is pronounced, and at that time, the day of grace would have passed. And then before the rest of the world, you're religious, you use that to cover up. And you do, you give some pennies to people, you use that to cover up. Everything will come into the open. I don't want to confess now. Well, you confess at that time. And you know that Christ is Lord. And over the people that go to hell, they'll not be able to resist. That person will perish. That person will suffer in hell forever and ever. And the judgment will not be a private thing. But you know, the repentance can be a private thing now between you and your God. Repent ye therefore tonight. You repent in Jesus' name. 
you will not wait until that time when all your evil will be exposed to the whole world at that time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I come to point number three now. Point number three is the confirmation of total liberation from heaven. The confirmation of total liberation from heaven. Matthew again, chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We have the key here tonight. The name of Jesus, that's the key. The mercy of the Lord, that's the key. And the promise of God, the invitation of the Lord, that's the key. And it says, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. Where are we now? I said, where are you now? Me preaching, where am I? You hearing and expecting your healing and deliverance, where are you? Okay, whatsoever, whatever the name of your sickness and the name of your problem, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That torment on your life, I bind him and I bring him out in Jesus' name. That thing knocking your head, I bind him and you are loose in Jesus' name. And whatsoever, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth. Heaven is listening to us here on earth. The Lord is concentrating and watching us here now, here on earth. And he remembers his word that can never fail. And it says, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. <laughs> you know, whatever it is in your life, Torturing you, traumatizing your life, tormenting your life from this pulpit here on earth, I'm going to lose that thing. And the Lord has assured us that He will lose it in heaven. That thing that binds you to the wheelchair, you are loose tonight. That thing that binds you to the crutches, you are loose tonight. That thing that bandages your eyesight, you cannot see, you are loose tonight. The power that restrains you, and your leg cannot move, and your mind cannot work, and the blood cannot pump in your heart, and the blood and the blood come out again from the heart and nourish your brain and everything. You are loose tonight. All those clots that were the block, the veins of the arteries of the heart and of your life. And they tie you up and it's like, I'm dying, I'm dying. You will not die. You are loose tonight in Jesus' name. That thing that holds your voice. And you cannot talk because you are bound there. You are loose tonight. And that thing that makes it when you sit down, you cannot get up. When you stand up, you cannot sit down. You are loose in Jesus' name. And the demons and messengers of the devil that comes to bind you up tonight, you are loose in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Verily, I say unto you, whenever Jesus said that, verily, he said, don't let there be any doubt in your heart or in your mind that it may happen to others, it may not happen to me. God will answer the prayers of others. He will not answer my prayer. That's not true. He will answer your prayer. If there is anyone, number one person, that God will answer my prayer for tonight, it is you. 
I said, it is you. My friends, my son, my daughter there online, tonight is your night. And friends and brethren who are here tonight, everyone without exception, lose him and let him go. You're free tonight. I said you're free tonight. Verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Where is he? I said, where is he? Where is she? Tonight is your night of miracle. The miracle of salvation. He loosed you from the chains of sin. You were powerless. As a drunkard, you couldn't stop. As a smoker, marijuana, you, can, you could not stop. As a fighter, a violent man, you could not stop. As a deceiver, you could not stop. But what you could not do by yourself, Christ will do it for you tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord is ready now to set you free. Moses asked Pharaoh, he said, all these frogs in your home, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in the sitting room, everywhere, when do you want the frogs to go? Because Moses was there to bind and to lose and to take all those frogs away and Pharaoh said tomorrow he wanted his trouble to continue another 20 24 hours you will not be like Pharaoh when do you want your sins to be forgiven now when do you want to be loosed from all the chain that binds you now then you are heads bowed and eyes closed. You want the salvation of the Lord. You want the forgiveness of the Lord. And you want that sin that is bringing shame, bringing condemnation, bringing regret. The sin that is showing you, you look like you are powerless. You always say you will not, but you always do it again. And the Lord is saying, where well, you are helpless and powerless, I want to help you tonight. I want to forgive you. I want to strengthen you. I want to change your life. You are there. Head's bowed and eyes closed. Raise up your hand and say, Lord, here I am today. Lord, here I am today. The things I wanted to do, I could not do. The things I didn't want to do, that's what I've been doing. But I want to be free tonight. And I want to have salvation tonight, forgiveness tonight. And I want to have uh, the real joy of salvation tonight. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. He's ready to forgive you. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. It's ready to take your sins away. It's ready to finish everything tonight and save you from the penalty of sin and save you from the power of sin and save you from the pollution of sin and save you from the practice of sin. Don't waste time. Stand up. He wants to give you salvation now. Don't waste time. Stand up. He wants to erase and blot out every sin you ever committed. He wants to set you free and he wants to loose you from the power, the chain, the yoke of that sin. Keep on standing. As we are standing, tell the Lord, O oh Lord, here I am. I come unto you. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died for me on the cross of Calvary. Tell him, I believe that only through him can I have salvation. Tell him. And say, Lord, I thank you. When you said it is finished, it was for me. 
it was for me. It was for me. The tyranny of sin is broken away from my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am forgiven. I am set free. I am saved because now I believe in Christ, the only one that can set me free. I'm praying with you now. Thank you, counselors. Go to the places where they are, stay with them. Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you for your love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus, we thank you for your love because you came uh, to take our sins away and to give us forgiveness, freedom, liberation from all those sins. Lord, we accept what you have done. We give ourselves unto you unreservedly. Be the Lord and the Savior of every life, receiving your forgiveness now in Jesus' name. And let the joy of salvation and the peace of salvation and the assurance in salvation come to every heart, every life, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say that with me. Thank you, Lord. Because I know you have answered and you have loosed them from the bondage and the tyranny of sin. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another amen. A reassuring Amen. Praise the Lord. Loose him and let him go. You are loose tonight in Jesus' name. Whatever the challenge, you can raise up your hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And when you hear the name, the mention of the name of Jesus, you know it is finished. Blind eyes will open wide and see. Deaf ears will be opened. Dumb tongues will be loosed. And everything that needs to be taken away from your life, from cancer to ulcer, whatever, the name of Jesus has set you free. So raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know you cannot fail. You will not fail. Lord Jesus who assured us, you said, Verily, I say unto you, whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. And Lord, in line with your word, in line with your commandment, I now set your people free in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sickness in your body come out in Jesus' name. That oppression in your life come out in Jesus' name. Insanity, madness, I command you come out in Jesus' name. All the demon possession and torment I command, get out in Jesus' name. Cancer, come out in Jesus' name. Incurable disease, be healed in Jesus' name. Also, you are healed in Jesus' name. Respiratory problem, difficulty in breathing, you are released in Jesus' name. Every swelling in your body, I command, Come out in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray everything that had bound anyone, anyone here, anyone online, until this time, liberation in every life. Freedom in every life. Healing in every life. Deliverance in every life in Jesus' name. 
you are loosed. You are set free. You are healed. You, you in particular, you are healed in Jesus' name. That wheelchair is no more for you. The crutches are no more for you. And the pain, no more for you. And the running blood, no more for you. And everything the devil has put upon your life, I command, they are gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has set you free. You are loosed.